Hey everybody, Damon D here today, and it's my honor and pleasure to interview all the way from Vienna, Austria, Samsara Joyride, who, by the way, has uh, their self-titled full length dropped today, which is really awesome. So how are you guys doing today? Very fine. Hello. We're doing fine, thank you. So let's uh, each of you just introduce yourselves and then talk about uh, your influence as far as what instrument you play, and then we'll go into band influences there. All right, I'm going to start. Uh, Florian, my name. Um, I play the guitar and I sing. Fortunately, the drummer uh, Andy couldn't make it today. Uh, yeah. So let's let's talk about yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about as a band what you would say some of your influences are. So people out there watching, uh, like who is some Sarah Joyride and what kind of music is it? And you know how did they you know how do they get their style? Mm -hmm. Um, I think the most important uh, ingredients, of course, uh, blues and rock, like a more uh, classic rock. We all like like uh, bands like uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Doors. Like those those uh, classic bands are big influences, of course. Um, but we also play around a lot with uh, stoner rock and um, psychedelic elements. So. If we had to define our our style, it would be I think psychedelic blues rock with stoner influence. If you put it in one sentence, yeah, something something like that. And then how do you how does the 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 twin guitar work and then the the vocals? Like how do you guys split between? Because you both can play guitar and sing. How do you decide who's going to be take lead on something? Or you know, on the album, there's a lot of kind of you know, blazing leads and guitar leads. And how do you guys decide, you know, I'm going to take this one or take that one? How does that work? There's a really, that's, that's a really pragmatic approach because uh, I, I played the guitar like for five years now. I think that's not too long and he plays a lot longer than me. Um, so I usually come up with some, uh, with some lyrics and like a basic idea how to, how to, how we could play it. Uh, and then, um, yeah, he takes the like mm -hmm. the more complicated guitar parts, like the solos, and yeah. so it's really uh, it depends on how it how it works best for us, who plays more and less. That's mm -hmm. like the the short answer to the question. So let me say this: uh, so there's nine tracks, and it comes the album comes in in about sixty seven minutes, sixty eight minutes, which is pretty long. So there's an album closer. There's a twelve minute. There's a nine and a half minute song. So how do you guys come up with the idea that, you know, we want to do these extended jams or is it, you know, why is there le not as many three minute songs or is that just your kind of preferred, you know, song length? How does that work? Um, the short answer is, I, th I think we just like long songs. <laughs> we all like them. We all like it when they, when they, when they have the, the room to grow. Uh, you know, the, the, just it's a big issue that uh, radio music is uh, all like so limited. You know, uh, most folks nowadays just uh, listen to like two or three minute songs. And for me personally, a, a song really just starts uh, like around that time. So we all just like it like that. And how it works, um, I think there's a basic idea, uh, like like a like a structure, uh, like a verse structure or something, and. Where the vocals are are happening, uh, and then someone comes up with, ah, let's try this. This part really reminds me of it. Let's try to, to like uh, like add it, and then we have another part. And someone else says, okay, now I have an idea like to 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 vary the rhythm here a bit, and so there's another part coming, and then like everything falls into place. It's like uh, like a puzzle or something where the the, the, the pieces. You put the pieces together and make it work, and it's just fun jamming around and, and playing around to, uh, with ideas like this. Yeah, and then uh, so in some of the songs, there's these longer passages with guitar. It's guitar focused. From a bass perspective and drums perspective, how do you kind of stay locked in the rhythm section while the guitars are doing their thing? Um, how do you kind of stay locked in and how do you stay focused on what you guys are trying to accomplish well as uh, the drummer Andy and i um 
we joined the band when there were already a few songs in place, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, the final result is not so far from what was already there. So mm -hmm. we basically just had to find our case or line to fit into it. Um, I have to say it wasn't so easy at the beginning because Michael played the lead guitarist. He plays very, very rhythmically. So there was a lot of the rhythm in a few songs was quite defined. So we had to find our place, but I think it was just from the start. We worked really well together. So everything just fell into place naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, it is with newer songs, it is much more of work involved that mm -hmm. we have to sit together and really plan through how we're going to build the song, how we're going to um, complement each other. Mm -hmm. But for the first album, it was more it just fell into place naturally. Cool. That's really good. Yeah. And then let's follow up on that uh, really quickly with uh, the idea that you have kind of two established members kind of start things and then you bring in two other people how do you kind of keep the same vibe but include their creativity and how does that how does that work yeah like 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 uh, like he said most of the songs from the first album were kind of uh, th there was at least uh, some some uh, blueprint or framework finished before they before they got in and added their part and i think that working on 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 this on these first tracks like being almost finished um kind of established uh, the vibe like you mentioned Let, let's talk about um another thing which is the kind of the vienna austria rock scene which you guys are involved in and how you know are you playing with other bands do you collaborate with other bands how is it a rock friendly scene or is it more of a electronic music or is it just a, a you know it's a large city so i'm sure there's you know music of all types but kind of describe that the scene that you guys are in yeah um yeah vienna is a very uh, uh like an old city <laughs> there uh, there's a lot of um, musical tradition here so um it's very diverse you have many rock bands you have many singer songwriters you have uh, jazz blues you have you have everything here um um to talk of a scene of a of, to really talk of a scene is kind of difficult for me because we are not so much connected to a, to a to a scene to a, like not that cohesive you know there's a lot of bands but i i kind of get the feeling everybody's like doing their own thing um maybe it's a little bit because of the the pandemic um you know probably there was a lot more going on before and um now it's like a bit all a bit isolated i guess so we are in contact with some other bands we played with uh, the devil smoke and now we're gonna play with uh, red machete and we are in contact with uh, uh, diamond skull so there's um, all these like mixed blues and, and, and blues rock and diamond skull are more like stoner um so we're in contact with other bands we play with uh, with other bands but we are not really connected to a to a big scene here maybe maybe there is yeah so let's have you move in front of that yeah. yep let's have you move it let's have you move directly in front <laughs> yeah it's actually quite easy in vienna to find gigs even if you're a new band so there's not really a necessity to collaborate with other bands. And as you already mentioned, I mean, there are a lot of bands. Everyone seems to get along pretty well. So it's quite easy to interact with other bands, but there's not like a strict collaboration. Yeah, that's what, okay. what I wanted to mention because you asked about Vienna being quite a rich uh, city for music. It's very interesting going around Vienna watching different people carrying around the most strange instruments because there's so much classical music. There's so many music schools in Vienna. You really can find everything. And I find myself often wondering, what could that guy have on his back here? Or that woman, <laughs> like, how is she going around with it? Quite interesting. Yeah, so I'm in California in Los Angeles and, you know, the, there's, you know, all kinds of music here, but it's definitely not 
that kind of classical hub of classical music that, that Vienna would be. Um, so let, let's talk about, you know, the recording process. I know for this album, it sounds like uh, it was, if I understand correctly, it was recorded live and then overdubs with vocals and guitar. Is that correct? And if so, were you guys kind of, is that the idea is to get the band in the studio recording versus, I know other bands play like on Pro Tools where they'll just send tracks back and forth. So talk about how that kind of recording process goes. Yeah, it was basically all live recorded. Um, we just did, like you said, the, the vocals are overdubbed and only uh, some some solos. So um, most of the, the instruments were uh, all played live. And it was uh, partly due to, because we only had limited time at the studio, we only had a long weekend. Um, we drove to, to Italy where, uh, where Daniel knows some, some people and knows uh, the, like the, the, the owners of the studio. So um, that was kind of familiar atmosphere, you could say. But um, we all, we, we just had a long weekend to get it down. So it was a necessity, yes, um, to, to, to play. Yeah life but not only a necessity because i i all i like bands like um for example uh, color haze or naxatras and i know they they all play their they, they all record their, their albums live and i like the vibe i like the organic and authentic feel of that so it was kind of the idea beforehand but then when we finally got like the, the appointment down where wh when and where can we really record it was only like a three day span and there in Italy. So we, we just went for it and did it. Um, and we got the, the instrumentals. We got the, the songs down in two days. It was wow. like, I think, let's say 20 hours, 20, 20 hours to 24 hours recording from, from morning to like late night, you could say. Um, and then one day for the overdubs, so the vocals and yeah, some, some solos. Wow, yeah. that's that's a really compressed time schedule. That's really yeah. that's really amazing. We were, um, in fact, we weren't really sure if we could if we would make it make it. <laughs> there was still some doubt. Can can we do that? Will it work? Uh, let's let's just try it. Let's just try it. And then it, I think we pretty much nailed it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's talk about there. There's two tracks on the album, uh, "Kingdom of Fear" Part One and Part Two. And those are very different songs. Uh, so was it that that was going to be one long 20 minute, 15 minute song and you broke it up or it's part one tells a certain story, part two, you know, part one tells one story, part two plays the other. And the reason I ask is because part two has a lot of slide guitar, acoustic guitar, you know, very different than the kind of blues rock groovy uh, ness mm -hmm. of, of part one. So talk about that kind of Kingdom of Fear one and two. Yeah. Um, how did that happen? That's a good question. Um, I think the reason why we split it was um, there was, I think, four or five verses, um, like uh, the lyrics um, was, the lyrics were pretty long. Um, and Kingdom of Fear part one turned out to be like after two verses, it was the perfect timing to make a to make a cut, to make a break, and um, let the let the song go in another direction to make it really like uh, interesting. So, but there was still two verses left to sing. Um, so my idea was, to, it's it's a blues scheme, you know. It's we could, we could just make another blues song out of it and tell like the whole story. I think all, all the verses tell one story, but to split it to make one like, uh, let's say a blues rock with a stoner vibe song and one like really traditional blues song out of it and, and split the story into two different songs. Yeah, because it's really yeah. unique, you know, it's really, so anybody out there that's watching yeah, okay. it. I never, I never heard something like that before and so, yeah, I mean, it was really unique to me. And I was going to say, you know, anybody watching out there that if you really like that kind of acoustic slide guitar, then part two really fits into your wheelhouse. It's really, it was kind of unexpected um, when I was listening to the album 
when you have this certain vibe and then it's like whoa this is like old school slide guitar it's really really amazing and then uh as far as the lyric mm -hmm. yeah I played the slide. oh you, you played the slide on that and you played a little yeah i had a like a, a basic blues picking yeah i really like the solos on on this track they, they are really i like the structure and it's a really well done song i think yeah 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 and i also do the the vocals on it you know the 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 only song i do the vocals on actually uh so the only song you do the lead vocal the lead um, vocals yeah because backing. there's a lot of background too yeah yes, right is also me yeah yeah it's really the good the idea here was to um the, the, the like it's the fifth <laughs> song out of nine so it splits the album into a half you know and it's like the yeah. Um, it, it sets it sets a, a mark where where you where the first half of the album ends and the second half starts. So it's kind of you know what I mean. Yeah, no, it breaks it up really well. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like a take a break from a certain yeah. style and then really kind of your ears kind of sonically it's, it's go in a new direction. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And then uh, so for you know part one, there's I think. Uh, well, actually, let's go to track five. Who am I? There's a there's a line in there that says, "We build our own prison cell and create our own hell." So, uh, wh where is that uh, coming? That that kind of uh, aspect coming from, as far as lyrics go? Like, what what's the idea behind a song like that? I think everyone is the creator of his or her own um, um, reality. In the end, if if you look if you look at society, if you look at the people like uh, some. There's so many, so many problems, so many misery out there, and um, we all make it really hard for each other. You know, um, ah, it's kind of hard to explain. A deep question. Um, yeah. Well, I had to have one deep question. I had to have <laughs> one. Do my, do my homework. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the things, though, is that music, that's one of the reasons why I have this channel, is to talk to people that play music, and it's opened up things all over the, all over the place, all over the world. Uh, mm -hmm. People that share kind of music and, you know, that good feeling and the good vibes. Because, you know, for, for myself, you know, I didn't know of any, you know, blues rock, psych rock, desert rock band in Vienna, but through kind of the power of music and the internet. It's like you can bring people together, find out about new things, new ideas, experience things. So I think that's that, that was one of the reasons why I played music was just to that, you know, when you play, someone comes up to you after the show and they like the music and it's, you know, as an artist, I think that's, you know, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Maybe I can, um, I can go back to answer that question um, a little, if I, if I um, refer to our, um, to our band name, you know, Samsara is the, the cycle of becoming and passing away, like the, 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 the universal law of cause and, and effect, like the, yeah, the life, basically, yeah. And, um, you know, everything repeats, kind of, like it's all a cycle, everything is round, everything repeats. So if everything is on repeat anyway, why do we all take it all so serious? You know, we we could we could be we could be much more nicer to each other. We could we could we could worry less. We could like uh, don't give such a damn about all these superficial things and and yeah, make life a big mess for each other. Yeah, if, if you if you look at politics, if you look at society, you know, and that's like I think that's this line about um, we we are the creator of our own hell or or make it a, a joyride you know <laughs> yeah uh, i'd rather make it a joyride myself yeah uh so yes. let's talk about let's talk about where uh people can get the new album i like i said it, it's it dropped today uh mm -hmm. so what are the platforms where it's available um yeah first of all on bandcamp you can find it on bandcamp and of course you can find it on youtube um, there's an ongoing discussion if we should use Spotify, but I think we don't. I think we we won't use Spotify. Um, there's a lot of criticism about that platform, and um, yeah, 
we want to we want to stay with our ethics you know what i mean so uh we we will just use bandcamp and, and youtube and go for that yeah and of course yeah. we have a we have a website samsarajoyride.com you can just find us there and all the links cool and so in the future um i know you mentioned you have a show i think in november do you, are you guys planning on any tours, any European tours, any international tours or local shows? Uh, what, what does the future look like in the rest of this year and into 2023? Yeah, we have two big plans for 2023. Uh, at first, we want to do a little tour. Um, we have no labels, so it's all, it's all DIY, so it won't be like a big European tour. But we're going to play a few shows here in Austria and then a few shows in Italy and a few shows in Germany. That's the plan. But it's still in the process. So there's no uh, there's no dates I can give you right now, but we'll keep you updated, of course. Um, but there is uh, like in I think in spring uh, around that time, there is going to be a tour coming. And after that, we definitely want to uh, record a second album because um, the recording of, of, of the first album is we recorded it like a year ago and we are still writing songs. I think we have enough material down to like, we could go to a studio right now, basically. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna fine tune that stuff and go on a little tour and then back to the studio and record a second album. And do you think, uh, it might be a little early to talk about this, but do you think that next album is going to be a similar format with similar length of songs and, or mm -hmm. in style, or you're going to throw just a curveball and sing in German, or just do <laughs> a cello, or just uh, you have any any thoughts on that? No, no, no such big surprises like singing in German. We're going to okay. stick to the okay. stick to the plan. I think. Um, I think it's going to be a bit heavier. Like um, I think we explore the stoner rock influences a bit more, um, but it's not like. Um, it's still gonna be like basically blues rock, but with I think some more heavier, some more heavier parts, some more stoner rock parts, uh, but still long jammy songs. Like you can, if you know our first album, you know what to expect. Oh, let's have you go right in front of that microphone. It's gonna be a little more progressive, I think. Like um, maybe yeah. different kinds. Like like you already said, it's gonna be a little less blues or the blues is going to be transformed a little mm -hmm. more than it was before. Yeah. Cool. Really so, so we'll have really long songs with lots of seven, four time signatures and interesting uh, fills and all that. So we're just about at time. So I really want to thank you guys for joining me today. You know, we had a little issue there with audio, but that's okay. That's part of the deal. Sometimes that happens, but we want to let everybody know that the new album is out today, YouTube, Bandcamp. So I want to thank some sort of joyride for this interview today, and we'll see you guys in the future. So this has been, oh, there we go. And oh, mm -hmm. before we, yeah, before we do that, let's talk about really quick. The last question is about the art. So someone in the band did the artwork for the cover. Who was that? Yeah. Like it was Andreas, the drummer. Well, hi to you, Andy. He, it's a painting. It's I think it's mm -hmm. oil. Was it? No, it's uh, acrylic. Okay, acrylic. And the idea was to use that painting as a like. I mean, as you see, that painting goes over the whole album. It's like even the inside. Like we really made the painting the central element of the of the design. Like even the CD. It's just everything. Wow. Goes into place. It's yeah, fantastic. I'm responsible for actually doing the design work on the album while the artwork itself is Andreas. Wow. I think it turned out well, and we actually have a limited edition. It's 100 CDs. Mm -hmm. The next press is going to be with a lot of barcodes and all that stuff. So if you want the original plain one. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. You mentioned, you mentioned before, it's nine songs. Well, it's nine tracks. Well... If you buy the CD, you're going to be in for a surprise. <laughs> All right. That's pretty amazing. So, yeah, I want to thank the guys. That was pretty cool. And this has been Damon D. One world, one rock.